Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior, coming your way on today's show. With all of these Donovan Mitchell trade rumors and the Jazz now being open to trading away Donovan Mitchell, we cooked up several trade ideas involving some really noteworthy and superstar players in the league and, of course, some really good and intriguing trade packages that could benefit Utah if they look to rebuild and tear it down under Danny Ainge. That's been his track record or for the acquiring teams of d -Mitch. First, we get you caught up with all of the latest on Donovan and Mitchell. In case you missed it, this is really the summary of what's gone down over the last 48, 72 hours. According to Adrian Wojnarowski, he broke the news. Jazz opened to discussing a trade. According to Brian Windhorst on Wednesday, he said the New York Knicks are the favorite. And of course, the asking price is going to be steep for a very good offensive player whose numbers in the postseason have been exceptional, even better than what he's done in the regular season. And in five years in Utah, he's been hovering around 25 points per game. The defensive a question. That's why Donovan Mitchell not necessarily a superstar, but is he a star? Probably is. What do you think about Donovan Mitchell? Let us know in the comment section before we start dissecting these trade ideas that we put together. Donovan Mitchell is a top blank player in the NBA. If you think he's top 25, let us know. I don't think he's quite there, but he's certainly closing in on that number. Trade idea number one. This is coming from my boy Marshall Green, host of New York Knicks Now. Make sure you subscribe to that channel. He put this together because he wants the Knicks to hold on to R.J. Barrett, a very good ascending young player who can be a two-way player. Some execs out there think that R.J. Barrett, as part of a Knicks trade for Donovan Mitchell, more attractive than a trade piece that could be Tyler Hero because of that two-way threat. So here's the trade idea number one from Marsh, and then we'll get to my trade idea for the Knicks after that. Knicks received Donovan Mitchell. Jazz received Quentin Grimes, who's been balling out in the NBA Summer League. Marsh called him Clay Thompson Light, Emmanuel Quickly, Evan Fournier, and four future first-round picks. I think that the Utah Jazz really want R.J. Barrett, so you might have to include him in that deal. So here's my trade idea for the New York Knicks. Jazz receive R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Evan Fournier, so a similar package with R.J., which I think this actually gets the deal done, and three first-round picks instead of four first-round picks. And keep in mind, the Rudy Gobert trade did change and alter the market to a little bit to a somewhat seismic advantage. First three years for R.J. Barrett. This guy continues to get better and better, and frankly, I think already he's become a better player than what I thought he was going to be early on coming out of Duke. Rookie year, 14 points per game, shot about 32% from three. There was a massive jump the following year, and I'm like, okay, really good numbers. Now, he was playing in front of empty arenas, and I think that's why the three-point numbers went up to 40. Can he be between 2020, 2021, and then this past year where the points per game were up to 20? The field goal percentage, though, went down to sub-41, and the three-point percentage went 34. If he could be 37% and give you some defense, R.J. Barrett, a very good young player and a good asset to get back, in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. Should the Knicks give up Barrett for D. Mitch? New York fans, let us know right now. I know you want to let your voices be heard because you're a loud city. Y for yes, N for no. Get that comment section going and you be the general manager. Donovan Mitchell trade idea number three. The Miami Heat, also a team, checking in on D. Mitch to see if they can trade for him. And like the Knicks, they do have the assets to give up in a trade. It would have to be Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. If I'm Miami, trading away Bam Adebayo, that's a steep price in addition to these two guys. So how about we throw in a pretty solid point guard in Gabe Vincent, who played big-time playoff minutes for Miami last year and was pretty successful as a guy who could put the ball on the floor and shoot the three. And on top of that, three first-round picks in the Heat receive Donovan Mitchell. The Heat knew starting five. It would look like this, and it would be one of the better ones in the Eastern Conference, if Pat Riley, the godfather, can pull this off, that's pretty solid. Kyle Lowry is your point, Demich as your two, Jimmy Butler as your wing, an even better playoff player than he is in the regular season, and that's really saying something. Max Struess at that forward spot to shoot the three ball. Defensively, at that four spot, some questions here, but can you make up for it with some switching? And then the versatility of Butler, and then the kind of height of Struess, and then Bam Adebayo can also help you defensively as well, getting out to that three-point arc. Who do you think would win this trade? Would it be Utah? Would it be the Heat? Tyler Hero, I think he can continue to develop. Duncan Robinson, can he rebound? Gabe Vincent, maybe he can be your starting point guard in three first-round picks to start your rebuild. J for the Jazz, H for the Heat. Let us know right now in the comment section. Now you can catch our NBA Now content 
on YouTube. You can catch it on Rumble as well. And we have a couple of Rumble NBA channels. Let's get ready to Rumble, homies. You already know the deal. Warriors today, NBA now, Lakers report, all closely contested right here in terms of picking up the most followers. So if you want more NBA content, join the Rumble family, rumble.com slash NBA now, or subscribe to our team channels as well. Down of a Mitchell trade idea number four as we pivot our focus to the Brooklyn Nets and the Nets showing some interest in d -Mitch. And if they're showing interest in Donovan Mitchell, this would be just a huge move made by Danny Ainge. You trade away Donovan Mitchell, and it's not a rebuild if you bring in Kevin Durant. Now, the trade package here is somewhat intriguing for Brooklyn. If the Nets receive d -Mitch, Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt, and two first-round picks. I think the level of player is why you don't get as many first-round picks. Jazz received Kevin Durant, and with Utah, Kevin Durant, Mike Conley, Bogdanovich, that's a solid team. It's not great by any means, but with KD, you can be great. And for the Nets, if you lose out on KD and Kyrie, but you can still put together this team here, that's a pretty solid unit of d -Mitch, Joe Harris, Ben Simmons, Nick Claxton, as well as TJ Warren. It's not what you were last year with KD and Kyrie, but again, you lose two of the better players of this generation, and you reload to a certain degree. You still have a star in d -Mitch with some other good pieces as well. TJ Warren can average 20 points per game if he's healthy. It's a pretty solid team for Brooklyn. We now go to the Memphis Grizzlies. I think a sneaky team in the Donovan Mitchell sweepstakes. That organization has been aggressive. I think they realize right now their time to win is right now with John Morant becoming an MVP candidate. So I think the Memphis Grizzlies would be wise to enter into these trade conversations. Grizzlies receive Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz receive Steven Adams has to be a part of it to make the contracts work because D. Mitch on that rookie max and Steven Adams making a lot of money as well after he got paid a couple of years ago. Dylan Brooks is a really good two-way player. Desmond Bain, one of the better three-point shooters from last year. And Zaire Williams, a former first-round pick and five-star recruit, who is also really good and has positional flexibility. Now, do you include some picks in this trade to complete it? If you're Memphis, yeah, you have to be aggressive. If you're willing to go to the 10-yard line and Utah wants some more picks, then throw them in in order to bring d -Mitch to have a backcourt in Grind City to get the FedEx Forum popping with, uh, with Mitchell, excuse me, as well as John Moran. There's another team also who has a player who could – Enter into the equation here. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. Up to this point, not a lot of teams showing interest in Colin Sexton. But if you lose out on Donovan Mitchell, Colin Sexton, he can give you between 20 and 24 points per game. According to reports, Cavs interested in a potential sign-in trade for Mitchell that could include Sexton. So in doing so, you'd team up Darius Garland with Donovan Mitchell. Now, Sexton would be cheaper than Mitchell and I think yield you similar results. But if Cleveland wants to go in on d -Mitch, I can understand the aggressiveness and I respect that. Now, as far as Sexton goes, year two had a really good year, 21 points per game nearly. And you look at the shooting numbers here. And then two years ago, before the injury last year, it went up to four, uh, 24 points per game, 47% from the floor and 37% from three. Those are really good numbers. So you lose out on d -Mitch, who's somewhat underrated in my opinion, and you fill out that void by bringing in Colin Sexton. Now, I think a lot of people here are going to say, as far as the better player goes, it's going to be Donovan Mitchell, but if you type CS in the comment section, let us know as far as the better player is. As for other d -Mitch destinations, we were talking with all of the great basketball minds here, chopping it up inside the walls of chat sports, like, okay, we put together these trade ideas. What are some other teams who could be calling up Utah and saying, hey, we have some really good players. So here are some squads right here. Toronto Raptors, you have Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and for Toronto, you could use another scorer in addition to Fred Van Vliet in that backcourt. Los Angeles Clippers, we know that Steve Ballmer is always aggressive. Now, you might have to part ways with one of your stud players, but the Clippers have the assets at the very least. Oklahoma City Thunder, they have the picks and the young players who can intrigue Utah if they decide to rebuild. The same can be said for the Houston Rockets, and as far as the Dallas Mavericks go, 
I'm sure ideally they would like to bring in D. Mitch to pair him up with Luka Doncic. Unfortunately for them, this low on the list in terms of reality because what are you going to give away? Josh Green, who doesn't have a lot of value. Tim Hardaway Jr., Davis Berton's future picks, but you don't have a lot of. But let's include Dallas because I'm sure they would check in to team him up with Luka Doncic. Which team makes the most sense for the Spida? Let us know and spider on down to that spider web into the comments section. Get those votes in, and we appreciate you for supporting the show.